What movie or series lit your fuse and made you have to tell stories on screen? Well, I think I have to go back to when I first realized there was a job, such a job as a director. And for me, I think that really started to, you know, come uh, pretty intense around the time of Raiders of the Lost Ark. So when I, when I, I remember being excited for Raiders and it wasn't for Harris, you know, it was a little bit for Harrison Ford, but it was because I knew that the guys behind the scenes who did Jaws and who did, uh, uh, Star Wars were behind the scenes of, of, of Raiders. And that was when I really started to put together what a director was. And then going to see that movie and it just feeling as if it was built for me, uh, I think really was the beginning of that. But it was also sort of in, strangely intertwined with Jaws, which is actually my favorite movie of that period. It's the really the connective tissue for me between the sort of rougher, more naturalistic movies of the 70s into the spectacle films that Star Wars was after that. And that's the stuff I really like the most. And the only movie like that really is Jaws. You know, I think it was it was it was just the really the naturalistic acting. Yes, it's the big Quint speech and yes, it's the stuff on the beach. But there's something so naturalistic about Jaws that people don't talk about. And that was much more naturalistic than Star Wars and Raiders that it really spoke to me. But it was, you know, at that same time, I discovered Bonnie and Clyde. I watched Bonnie and Clyde with my dad and it was like whoa, people can get killed at the end of the movie. There's not only one choice for the ending of a film. It's not only happy endings. It can be anything and you have complete freedom. But it was that combination of the spectacle and the gritty naturalistic feel that was so enticing to me with Jaws and to this day still. And I don't care at all about, it. I mean, the shark looks fine to me because it's the idea of the shark that works. It's not the, the shark itself. I mean, who cares? On your way up, what movie or series did you watch that was so good it made you question if you could ever rise to that level? You know, for me, I think that would probably be the Hong Kong action movies of the 1990s because I wanted to do action. And up until the 1990s, really up until in the United States, up until The Matrix came out, um, action was kind of a, sim a simple, even simplistic thing. And for me, seeing the movies of John Woo and Choi Hawk and all of these people in the early 90s blew my mind. And that's when I started, you know, taking those, you know, I, I owned, you know, hundreds and hundreds of bootleg uh, Hong Kong videos. I would go down, there was a store in Times Square owned by these two guys. I'd go in and ask them what was good that week. They would turn me on to stuff. And I watched hundreds of these things, but I would also break them down and sort of, you know, draw out the shots and storyboard from the movie, how the action worked and how it cut together and how they created impact on film. And for me, that was an exciting like time in a lab for me, uh, trying to figure out if I could do what those guys do. And I really think that only recently am I able to perform at that level of action as those guys were back then. Whether it was your own work or approval from someone who mattered to you, what first gave you the confidence that you belonged? Well, I think it's something I'm doing. I mean, I think it really has been pretty recent. I think that me desiring to be famous and me desiring to be, you know, rich, um, all those, those, you know, the, the need for love that I have from people, the need to be praised, all of those things battled with my basic creative nature for a long, long time. And it wasn't until that I got fired by, you know, Marvel that at that point, I really found that I didn't need that life to fill that need of love. I have people around me who fulfill me in terms of my needs to feel loved. And that really the, the reasons that movies exist are to pay the bills. So the money thing isn't completely out of whack, but I don't need to be crazy about it. But the biggest thing is, is my creative enjoyment. I, I thrive off of creating stories and creating characters and, you know, making myself laugh. And that creative process, not only by myself with writing, 
but also the process of creating stuff with my collaborators, whether it's my cinematographer, the actors, or whomever. That is what I enjoy in life. That's the creative flow. And making that the primary reason that I'm making movies really changed everything about the process of making films for me. I actually enjoy doing it now, which I never did before. I stepped on set for the first time with my first movie I ever made, which was Tromeo and Juliet in 1995, working for Troma Studios. And I stepped on set and I'm like, I'm home. This is where I belong. And I think it even irritated a lot of people how at home I felt and how easy it was for me to take control of the situation. Um, but that was when I think I just felt like I was in the right place. And I felt like finally there was an art form that utilized the different various weird things I was good at, whether it was my, you know, the way I, I process spatial relationships, um, my sense of composition, uh, my ability to be an actor and deal with actors and see where actors are coming from. And it really felt like I was at home for the first time during that time. In a bigger scale, it was when, you know, when Spielberg said that his favorite superhero movie was Guardians, like, you know, the guy that started it out for me. I, I remember exactly, I was in my editing room with Fred Raskin editing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and I, I just started crying. I mean, that to me was, I can't have a bigger compliment than that. I, honestly, that would be much better to me than winning an Oscar, because I just can't imagine ever feeling that way again. What was the biggest obstacle you overcame that allowed you to turn the projects that influenced you into your own language? Well, I always enjoyed, uh, you know, I always had some enjoyment. I mean, obviously everything's difficult at times and torturous at times, but in general, I really enjoyed pre prepping a film. I enjoyed writing a film. I enjoyed doing the storyboards and kind of creating what it was going to be. And I've really always enjoyed editing a movie, the post-production aspects, both overseeing the visual effects, but also going through the actual edit itself and putting the music together and the mix and all of that is very fun to me. But the shot, the, the process of pr shooting a film has always been terrible to me, you know? I met, I met a guy one time who was in um, Cirque du Soleil and I went to see the Cirque du Soleil show he was in in Vegas. He was a gymnast who was now doing this beautiful trapeze work. And we went out after the show and I said to him, that's the most, um, you look like a superhero. Like that's the most beautiful, amazing thing in the world. That must be so fun. What are you feeling while this is going on? And he said he just feels terror the whole time because if he falls, the, the ropes hurt when he, he falls on them, you know, and he could hurt himself. So he just is on stage doing this beautiful stuff and feels nothing but terror. And I said, that you're the first person I've ever met who understands how I feel while I'm directing a movie. That's what it's like. There's no rope, you know, there's no net for me to fall into. It's just, you do something for years and then people are gonna decide if they love it or hate it over a weekend. I love being with other people. I'm a very social person. So I love my connections with other human beings, but the actual process of standing on set and needing to get my shots done is, could be terrifying at times. And it really wasn't until the Suicide Squad that I felt for the first time, I'm like, I'm actually enjoying this. What's going on? I'm sleeping at night. I'm having a good time. I'm just, I'm feeling in control of things. It was just a good time the whole, the whole way through. How has the explosion in streaming changed the way you work? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, I'm doing this, I did this TV show after I did Suicide Squad called Peacemaker. And that's a TV show that absolutely could not exist under the old models. That is, uh, it's very, uh, you know, R-rated and it's a mix of genres. Um, and it's very heartfelt, but also very funny. And it's just, a, it would not have found a home in the past necessarily. Maybe HBO, you know, but so I think the idea that people are allowed to have a wider variety of content is, is great. You know, I think it's scary uh, because I do enjoy going to the theaters and I do think that some of the things that different directors have said, you know, some of Scorsese's fears and things like that have some validity, you know, and I do think people are going to see in theaters spectacle films only. And this is even before the pandemic. Uh, 
And I get afraid that those things don't aren't changing as much as they should be, that they're too similar to one another. So, you know, as, as long as I'm making movies, as long as I'm making big movies, my commitment is that they're going to have to add something to that language of filmmaking, of cinema, um, that's different from what came before it. Uh, it, it far, as far as the TV show goes, th that's just really fun to me. It's a, it was like playing in a whole new sandbox. So that aspect of streaming, I really love. And listen, I loved having streaming. I don't know what I would have done during the pandemic if I didn't have streaming, if I had three networks I was watching or whatever, it would have been very difficult. So I'm grateful for it.